Hi, my name is Brian Ruby, and it's great to be with you today. If you count yourself a baby boomer, the monologue from these two 60s dramas will strike a familiar chord. The story you're about to hear is true. The names have been changed to protect the innocent. Take a five out of petty cash if you came up with Dragnet and Adam 12. Now, here's a different take for the following account. The story you are about to hear is true. The names have not been changed because there is none innocent except for the Lamb of God. It was early on a Friday morning after my Bethel men's group when heading home, an estate sale sign caught my eye. My grandson needed furniture and maybe I could pick up something for him. Amazing couldn't describe the prices. Equally amazing was only a handful of shoppers. Game on. I'll, I'll take that leather recliner. My pulse quickened in those eight oak chairs in the other room. The helper removed the tags while a sense of euphoria followed me room to room. In my haste, I made a rookie mistake by not taking a price tag off a piece I was leaning toward. Enter my opponent. She was examining it closely. A beautiful wine-colored wood trim swivel rocker by the front door. Why I waited without scooping it up in the first place is better left to angels and psychologists. A young woman helping facilitate the sale walked by and tapping her arm, I used my best undercover voice. I've decided to take that swivel rocker by the chair, by the door. Okay, she said and called across the living room. I'm sorry, but that rocker is sold. It still has the price tag on it, the shopper responded with a slight edge. My return volley flew over the imaginary net. I put a hold on it. Well, the tag is still on it. She acted as if my ball had clipped the net and dropped on my side of the court. Throwdown time. I sized her up. She appeared to be about my age, oldish. Maybe an arm wrestling match with the victor taking the chair. On second thought, my noodle arms might fall prey to her confident prowess. My fleshly ruby dander was unleashed. I've been here about 20 minutes. Spectators were taking bets. How long have you been here? She bristled. That doesn't matter, the tag is still on it. It was my serve at 40 all. Throwing up my arms and shaking my head in mock surrender with a cup of sarcasm stirred in, I huffed. Fine, take it. Bets were being paid when she approached the net and hadn't handed me the price tag. Next time, take the tag off. The trophy chair was mine, I won. Driving 60 seconds to my house to get the cash should have been a victory lap around the court, but it wasn't. And during the 60 second drive back, I heard him, not an audible voice, but just as powerful and loud and clear. In, a, in essence, psst, your holy old nature is showing. Holy Spirit conviction wrapped around my conscience. Guess I'd be staying late tonight for a remedial class on how to be a better Jesus lover. I asked her for his forgiveness, and even as the Father's sure mercy washed over me, a follow-up prompting came. Once again, loud and clear, by the chair for her. Oh man, repentance is messy enough when your fleshly pride has to be nailed to the cross. When it comes with an act of obedience, ouch. Pulling up to the sail, I thought maybe she'll be gone. She wasn't. Slipping through another door, way, uh, in my stealth mode, I found Lynn, the owner. My mind formulated a plan. Pay for my furniture and the chair, then point out my used-to-be opponent with instructions to wait until I was gone to give it to her. Perfect. I'm back with the money for the furniture. This might work. I'm so glad you found the, some things for your grandson, Lynn smiled. She had mentioned earlier that this house was full of her dad's memories and easier to let go of knowing others would be enjoying them. Handing her the money for the chair, I was just about to give those instructions when the stranger walked in the living room. As I pointed to her in silence, she turned and we three made eye contact. This man wants to buy that chair for you, Lynn blurted out as if over a loudspeaker and as excited as I was chagrined. Jesus was probably grinning right about now. All right, Lord, I surrender. Game, set, match. She moved toward us with a look of confusion. What? I want to apologize for how I acted earlier, closing the gap between us. I got caught up in the frenzy of the moment, and I'm sorry. Her demeanor softened. Please let me buy the chair for you. It felt like heaven's oil being poured over the moment in space. She softened. No, 
I would love to have the chair, but I'll pay for it. All right, could I pay half? I said, wanting to make sure the Holy Spirit was okay with this. A smile grew from the corners of her mouth. No, but thank you for offering. Lynn was so caught up in the moment, she asked, do you two know each other? We shook our heads. She started to make introductions while grabbing her phone to snap a picture of us standing side by side. This is Brian Ruby. The lady's jaw dropped and her eyes sparkled. My name is Ruby. Sunday's message focused on the tongue and how the words that spill out from it matter. Ephesians 4, 25 through 32 gives a laundry list of the right and wrong ways to use the tongue for truth, for building up, giving grace, showing kindness, or using it for anger, slander, wrath, and shouting. The good news is Jesus lives inside of us and when our tongues go south and we blow it, he's going to let us know. Believe me, he'll let us know. So the next time you hear the Holy Spirit whisper, psst, your old nature is showing. Forfeit the game and surrender. And let's keep our conversation centered around Jesus this week.